Are we all world-class performers prodigies? Is it true that some people are just born to be the best swimmer, boxer, businessman, or pianist? Surely the best had to work and train harder than anyone to be at the top. However, is it safe to say that anyone who exerts enough effort could be the greatest in their field? In Talent is Overrated, Jeff Colvin delves into the conversation and looks into whether or not talent is a factor in becoming the best and the brightest. Here are the top seven lessons from the book Talent is Overrated by Jeff Colvin. Lesson one, practicing does make perfect. Picture this, you enter a new workplace with zero experience and you're surrounded by people who've been in the business for five to 10 years. You'd expect that these people would be top performers, right? However, research actually shows that there's no correlation between performing well and having years of experience. Most of the time, the relationship is inversely proportional. Instead, keeping up with the latest innovations and constantly improving ourselves will lead to becoming the best. Doing the same thing again and again does make one experienced, but it doesn't make them superb. This goes with talent as well. Studies show that once given the same time to learn an instrument, a natural talent and a novice show the same output. So the next time you don't feel good enough, pick yourself up and start practicing. Lesson two, be a performer. Since we've established that experience and natural talent don't exactly make us the best, then how about intelligence? It makes sense that being smarter can help us in learning skills faster, right? However, research shows that people with higher intelligence quotients, or IQ, aren't always the best performers. Jeff Colvin noted an experiment where managers compared a sales team's IQ scores and their sales performance. In the end, it showed that there was no connection between the two. It turns out we don't have to be the brightest to be the best. We just have to work harder and better than everyone else. Lesson three, try until you succeed. Sudden strikes of ingenuity and genius were made famous in the stories of Archimedes and Isaac Newton. In stories, their eureka moments were always chanced upon or came from unexpected realizations. However, these probably never happened. Scientific discovery, artistic inspiration, and inventions always come from months or even years of hard work. Jeff Colvin even notes a research where 80 composers were observed. It was found that it took an average of 10 years before their first masterpiece was created. Rarely does genius come from a brief moment of serendipity. Success is the result of trial and error, numerous failed attempts, and intense immersion in a chosen practice. Lesson four, work deliberately. So far, we've discussed that neither talent, experience, or intelligence leads to becoming the best. But how do we become the best? Jeff Colvin's answer is deliberate practice. This isn't just aimlessly doing something repetitively. It's practicing with the intention to improve ourselves and to strengthen our weaknesses. A lot of people say that we should work smart, not hard, but Jeff Colvin states otherwise. To him, we should work smart and hard. So how do we exactly do this deliberate practice? First, we should determine what we're good and bad at in our chosen fields. Then we work harder on our weaknesses until we improve. This is the work smart part. The work hard part comes in when we keep on repeating this method until we're the absolute best. Lesson five, start young. Although it is rare for persons to determine their path at a young age, it helps to start deliberately practicing early on. World-class performers and Nobel Prize winners all started from scratch. According to research, the average age of great inventors and Nobel Prize winners is around middle age. This is because it takes a long time to fully understand and uncover not only what we're practicing, but also ourselves. The earlier we start working smart and hard, the more time we get to improve. Lesson six, stay motivated. We now know that we have to work deliberately and practice for a long time to be the best. Climbing to the top is no easy journey. Surely we'll experience hardships and failure along the way. So it's important to know that the make or break factor is our motivation. Our internal drive to succeed should always be present for us to become high performers. Motivation will save us when we feel like quitting. Lesson seven, know your field. Since we've learned about how to become high performers, it's also vital to know where we'd like to excel. Once we choose a field we're passionate about, almost half the battle is won. Always remember that we should be determined in the field we choose. It's not enough to just dabble. Those who became the best didn't just dip their toes, but immerse themselves in the fields they chose. After finding out the niche for you, make sure to check yourself. Are there skills you lack? Is there something you should research more? Not only should we know what field we wanna be in, but we should also know everything about the fields we choose. In conclusion, this book shows us that talent isn't the sole determinant of our success. Hard work, intent, and motivation can lead us to become top performers. By applying the notes we learned in the book, we can become the best in our chosen fields. How about you? How can you become the best? Tell me in the comments section. Thank you for listening. If you like the book summary and you want to see more in this category, please like and subscribe so I can create more. You can also get a free copy of the entire audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time.